Adobe Aero is a very easy to use program if you want to get your feet wet in the augmented reality world. And a recent update has allowed the use of image sequences and GIFs so we can import our own 2D animations into the program. So in this tutorial, we're going to make this wormhole or eyeballs in After Effects and import it into Adobe Aero and then put it out into the real world. So you can go ahead and download these project files and the renders in the description below, but I thought I might as well show you how to make this black hole real quick. So the first thing I did was create a square 1080 by 1080 composition. I animated a simple circle scaling up and down. Then I used this as a mask for CC Starburst to give it that spacey vibe. I added a little twirl for a nice spin and then added a CC lens to really give it that classic wormhole look. And then finally, this wasn't trippy enough for my liking, so I added a colorama to give it a little spice. And then finally, I wanted this wormhole to feel like it was sucking in the world around it, so I added another CC starburst outside the boundary of the wormhole with a little echo on top to give it this nice drag effect. And since this is going to be a PNG or GIF, uh, it can use this transparency around it. So we want to render this according to Adobe. We can use either an animated GIF or PNG sequence bundled in a zip archive. Now in my testing, I could not get a GIF to work. It crashed Arrow every time, so I will be sticking with a PNG sequence. So let's render this using Adobe Media Encoder. Select PNG sequence and make sure you select alpha so that it retains transparency. You can also scale the size down a bit since phones are small. Now that we have our animated asset, we need to get this into our Adobe Aero app on our telephone. We're going to sync this via Creative Cloud. Now you'll see a library in After Effects that seems like you should be able to drop your assets into here, but I could not get this to work. So here's what worked for me. Launch the Creative Cloud app on your desktop, then go to File, Go to Creative Cloud Web. From here, you'll see your files and your synced files. I made a little folder named Arrow Stuff, which you can drop in your zipped PNG sequence. And then it won't work. And Adobe won't tell you why it doesn't work. It just won't upload. So then you might have to go back and re-render your PNG sequence either smaller or you can do it with less frames out of Media Encoder and then try again. So I dropped mine from 30 FPS to 15 FPS tried again and then that was the ticket that worked and now we are good to go. So we are going to launch the Arrow app on our phone and create a new scene by clicking this little plus button here. Then we need some surfaces to put anchors onto so just kind of swing your phone around and let Arrow scan. I found that floors were a little bit easier than walls, but if you just, uh, you know, swing it around a little bit, you can find them. And then you click on a surface that's found to put a anchor down. Click the plus to add on your assets. I'll go Creative Cloud to find my Arrow stuff. Pause. While filming this, I decided to use the eyeballs for the rest of the tutorial because I thought it made for a better viewing experience. Hopefully it does not throw you off too much, but I don't think it will because you're very smart and talented. Okay, let's proceed. So we're going to select our assets from the folder, our zip or gif, and place them onto the wall. And if your sequence starts transparent like mine does, then you will not see anything. So if you are having trouble finding it, then you can click this button down in the bottom right to find your sequences, and then you'll get this little outline, and then it's easy to scale and rotate them, and you also have these buttons down on the bottom in the toolbar, which you can use to move, rotate, scale. 
So if you want to rotate, I recommend using the toolbar because then you can just kind of rotate things on this axis, which makes it a lot easier if you want to try to rotate things on a plane, which I do not want to do in this case. I want it to just kind of stay aligned to the wall like it already was. So I'm just going to undo that here. Then we also have behaviors on the bottom toolbar here where we can use a trigger to choose how this animation is going to play. It can either just start automatically, we can tap on the screen to play it, or it can play when we enter a certain proximity of this object, which is what I'm going to choose. So I will choose to play the images when we enter its proximity, as you can see here. So I will change the proximity to be, let's say, 6.3 feet, I think it is. It's not really that accurate, but you can just choose this to be a certain distance that feels good. And then you can test it out by clicking this play button in the top and then see how that distance feels. And if you want to keep editing, you click the little pencil and then you can keep editing to your scene. So if I want to add another asset, just click plus again, go back in and add another zip. Place the asset onto my wall. I obviously, I don't see it again because it's another transparent start, but I can go back in and I can add more behaviors or change the scale and the position the same way that I did on my first sequence. So I'll just put this one in another position and add another trigger, proximity, change the distance. Maybe it's slightly different so that I can have a nice stagger when I walk up to these things and say OK, and then click Preparing Scene, and then walk up to the wall and see how this feels. Pretty cool. All right, that is it. Don't forget you can download the project files and renders in the description below if you want to make anything with them. Please tag me if you do. I would like to see it. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.